Here's a lesson on solving equations involving fractions. When you have an equation with a single fraction, rearranging and isolating using inverse operations works well to solve for the unknown variable. For example, if we look at this equation, 2x divided by 5 equals 10, to solve that equation means to find the value of x that makes the left side of the equation equal to the right side of the equation. So 2 times what divided by 5 equals 10? We can solve this algebraically by isolating this variable x by rearranging the equation using inverse operations. So we look at the x on the left and see what operations are being applied to that x. Well, it's being multiplied by 2, and it's being divided by 5. If I want to move this 5 to the other side of the equation using inverse operations, well, what's the opposite of dividing by 5? That would be multiplying by 5. So what I can do if I want to move the 5 to the other side is multiply both sides of the equation by 5. Right? As long as we do the same operation to both sides of the equation, the equation stays balanced. And the reason why we chose to multiply by 5 on both sides is because it's going to get this 5 onto the other side of the equation. Notice on the left, I have a 5 divided by a 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1, so I can cancel out those 5s leaving me with, on the left side of the equation, just a 2x. And on the right side of the equation, I have 10 times 5. If I simplify the right side of the equation, I have 2x equals 50. And now I just have to move this 2 to the other side of the equation by doing the opposite of multiplying by 2. The opposite of multiplying by 2 is dividing by 2. So as long as I do that to both sides of the equation, the equation stays balanced. And then on the left, I have a 2 divided by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1, so I can cancel those 2s out. And on the left side of the equation, I'm just left with my variable x. So I have x equals 50 divided by 2, which means that x is equal to 25. And we could check that value of 25 in the original equation to make sure that it makes the left side equal to the right side. 2 times 25 is 50, divided by 5 is 10. So 25 is the correct answer to the equation. Now let's move on and look at what happens if we have multiple fractions within the same equation. If you have an equation with multiple fractions, it's often easiest to eliminate the fractions by multiplying both sides of the equation by the lowest common multiple of the denominators of the fractions. For example, if we look at this equation, I have 5x over 3 minus 3x over 2 equals 4, and I have to solve for what value of x makes the equation true. Well, because I have two fractions where the denominators are 3 and 2, I need to multiply both sides of the equation by the lowest common multiple of 3 and 2. Well, the multiples of 3 are 3, 6, 9, 12, and so on. The multiples of 2 are 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on. The lowest common multiple they have is 6. So I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 6. And these brackets on the left are important so that the entire left side gets multiplied by 6. So I now have to distribute that 6 to both of the terms in the brackets. I have to do 6 multiplied by 5x over 3 minus I have to do 6 times 3x over 2. And on the right side of the equation, 6 times 4 is 24. And now I can simplify the fractions. I have a 6 divided by 3, which is 2. And I have a 6 divided by 2, which is 3. Which leaves me with, on the left, 2 times 5x minus 3 times 3x. And if I simplify those products, I have 10x minus 9x equals 24. And then collecting my like terms, 10x minus 9x is 1x. So I figure out that x is equal to 24. And you can, of course, check that answer of 24 in the original equation by subbing this 24 in for both of the x's in the original equation. And if we sub it in, we would get 40 minus 36, which is 4. So x equals 24 is the correct answer. So now that you know how to solve equations involving fractions, let's go ahead and practice a few. Let's start with example 1a, where it says solve the following equations. In 1a, there is only one fraction. So if I want to solve for the value of x that makes this equation true, I want to isolate that x by first getting rid of this fraction. 
And I can do that by multiplying both sides by whatever the denominator of the fraction is. So multiply both sides of the equation by 3. So make sure you don't forget that both sides get multiplied by 3 so the equation stays balanced. And the reason why we do that is because now on the left side of the equation, I have a 3 divided by 3, which is 1, so I can cancel those out. Leaving me with, on the left, 1 times x minus 2, which is just x minus 2, is equal to, and on the right side of the equation, 3 times 5 is 15. So now what I just have to figure out what minus 2 is equal to 15. We can fully isolate the x by moving this minus 2 to the other side of the equation. The opposite of subtracting 2 is adding 2. So if you wanted to, you could show on both sides adding 2. And on the left, negative 2 plus 2 is 0, so those cancel out, leaving us with just x equals 15 plus 2, which is 17. And don't forget to sub that back into the original equation to verify that that is the correct answer. And when subbing it in, 17 minus 2 is 15, and a third of that is 5. So 17 is the correct answer. Moving on to part b, once again in this equation, I only have a single fraction. The only denominator is 5. So we can start by getting rid of that denominator of 5 by multiplying both sides of the equation by 5. Because I multiply both sides by 5, the equation is still balanced. And on the right side of the equation, I have a 5 divided by 5, which is 1. So I can cancel those 5s out on the right side. On the left, I have negative 14 times 5, which is negative 70. And on the right, I just have 2 times x minus 3. And now when rearranging an equation, we do bed mass in reverse. So I would do inside the brackets last. I'll take care of this multiplying by 2 first. To move this 2 away from the x, I'll do the opposite of multiplying by 2, which is dividing by 2. And I'll make sure I do that to both sides to keep the equation balanced. On the right side, I have a 2 divided by 2. That's 1, so I can cancel those. And on the left, I have half of negative 70, which is negative 35. And then like we've been doing the whole time, we could keep doing the balance method where I now add 3 to both sides to get rid of that minus 3. But usually when we only have addition and subtraction left being done to the variable, we can just think of rearranging by moving to the other side using an opposite operation. So that minus 3 moves to the other side by doing the opposite of subtracting 3, which is adding 3. So on the left, I have negative 35 plus 3. And on the right, I just have my x which means that x is equal to negative 32. So there's the final answer. And don't forget that you could check that in the original equation to verify that it's correct. All right, we have five more to practice. In part C, we have two fractions. Notice I have a fraction equal to a fraction. There's a shortcut for this one called cross multiplication. But before I show you that shortcut, Let's do this question how you would normally solve an equation that has two fractions. You would look at both denominators, and you would want to get rid of those fractions by multiplying both sides of the equation by a common denominator. The lowest common multiple between 5 and 3 is 15. So I would multiply both sides of this equation by 15. And the reason why we do that is because it will eliminate both fractions. On the left, I have 15 divided by 5, which is 3. And on the right, I have 15 divided by 3, which is 5. So on the left, I have 3 times 3x minus 2. And on the right, I have 5 times 2x minus 1. So you might notice what happened. If we have a fraction equal to a fraction, what ends up happening when we multiply both sides by a common denominator is that on one side of the equation, we end up with a product of the denominator of the right side and the numerator of the left side. And then on the other side of the equation, we have the product of the denominator of the left with the numerator of the right. So we can create those two sides of the equation by multiplying the 3 and the 3x minus 2 together and multiplying the 5 and the 2x minus 1 together. And that gives us those two sides of the equation. And the reason why that works is because of the algebra shown above. And then to finish solving this equation for x, I would have to expand both sides of the equation on the left. I have 3 times 3x, which is 9x, minus 3 times 2 is 6. And on the right side of the equation, 5 times 2x is 10x, minus 5 times 1 is 5. And now I'll want to rearrange this equation to get the variable terms on the same side and the constant terms on the other side. Well, my variable terms are 9x and 10x. Let's get them both on the right side of the equation. The 10x is already on the right, so I'll leave it. 
And then I can bring this 9x to the other side of the equation by changing its sign, making it a negative 9x. And on the left side of the equation, I'll have my constant terms. I have a negative 6 that's already on the left. And on the right, I have a negative 5. When I bring that term to the other side, it becomes a positive 5. So on the left, I have negative 6 plus 5, which is negative 1. And on the right, 10x minus 9x is 1x. So my final answer is just x is equal to negative 1. And you can check that into the original equation to verify left side equals right side. So you'll notice the rule over here is written. It says when solving an equation with two fractions set equal to each other, we can use cross multiplication to eliminate the fractions. Multiply the numerator of one fraction by the denominator of the other and vice versa. Set these products equal to each other, then solve the resulting equation. So to summarize all of that, we can summarize it nicely with what it says down here. If we have two fractions equal to each other, multiply the numerator of one side with the denominator of the other, so a times d, and set that equal to the product of the other numerator and denominator pair, b times c. And now let's continue on to part d. Now this one looks a bit different than the previous question. It's not just a fraction equals a fraction. It's a fraction times this binomial equals a fraction times that binomial. So we won't use cross multiplication with this. We only do cross multiplication when it looks exactly like this, fraction equals fraction. There's other stuff happening here. Now, we, we could set this up to be a fraction equals a fraction, but I won't bother doing that. Instead, I'll notice that I have two fractions. The denominators are 4 and 3. I can get rid of those denominators if I multiply both sides of the equation by a lowest common denominator of 4 and 3. Well, the lowest common multiple of 4 and 3 is 12, so I'll multiply both sides of the equation by 12. Since we did it to both sides, the equation is still balanced, and by multiplying both sides by a common multiple of 4 and 3, when dividing the 12s by both 4 and 3, we'll get whole number values which will eliminate the fractions. 12 divided by 4 is 3, and 12 divided by 3 is 4. So on the left, I have 3 times 1 times x minus 3, so that's just 3 times x minus 3. And on the right side of the equation, I have 4 times 1 times x minus 2. So that's just 4 times x minus 2. And I'll expand both sides of the equation. 3x minus 9 equals 4x minus 8. And now I'll get these variable terms on the same side. I'll move them to the right. So the 4x stays on the right. And this 3x can move to the other side if I make it a negative 3x. And then the constant terms will move to the left. The negative 9 stays on the left. And then I'll take this negative 8, move it to the left by adding 8. So that gives me a final answer. Once again, negative 9 plus 8 is negative 1, and 4x minus 3x is x. So we have a final answer of x equals negative 1 again. And you can verify that in the original equation. Three more. Let's move to part E. Part E, this is the first time we've had one, two, three fractions. Let's start by getting rid of those fractions by multiplying both sides of the equation by the lowest common multiple of 5 and 3. The lowest common multiple of 5 and 3 would be 15. So I'll multiply both sides of this equation by 15. And now all terms on both sides have to be multiplied by that 15. So I'll distribute the 15 to all three terms that are on the left. And I'll also distribute the 15 to both terms on the right. And now all the fractions should eliminate. 15 divided by 5 is 3. 15 divided by 3 is 5. And then all the way at the end, I have another 15 divided by 5, which is 3. So all the fractions are gone. On the left side, I have 3 times 1m, that's 3m, plus 5 times 2, which is 10, minus 15 times 2, which is 30, equals, then on the right I have the 15m minus 3 times 2, which is 6. I can collect this 10 minus 30 together to make it a negative 20. And now I'll get my variable terms to the right side of the equation, and my constant terms to the left side of the equation. So on the right, I'll leave the 15m and bring over this 3m, making it a negative 3m. On the left, I'll have my constant terms, negative 20, and then bring over this negative 6, making it a plus 6. So I have negative 14 equals 12m. The m is being multiplied by 12, so I should divide both sides by 12 to fully isolate that m. On the right, the 12s cancel, 
and I figure out that m is equal to negative 14 over 12. But that reduces. 2 goes into 14 and 12, 7 and 6 times respectively. So it simplifies to negative 7 over 6. And that would be my final simplified answer. m is negative 7 over 6. And that can also be checked in the original equation. And now let's move on to part f. For part f, once again, I have 1, 2, 3 fractions. So let's start by getting rid of those fractions by multiplying both sides by the lowest common multiple of 2 and 3. The lowest common multiple of 2 and 3 is 6, so I'll multiply both sides of this equation by 6. On the left, both of these terms inside the brackets have to be multiplied by the 6. I have to do 6 times the first term, plus I have to do 6 multiplied by that second term. And I'll just rewrite the right side of the equation for now. And now all the fractions should simplify. I have a 6 divided by 2, which is 3. Another 6 divided by 2, which is 3. And on the right, 6 divided by 3, which is 2. So I have a 3 times 3x, that's 9x. Plus, I have a 3 times x minus 4 equals a 2 times x plus 14. I'll expand both sides of the equation. On the left, I have to do 3 times x minus 3 times 4. So that gives me 9x plus 3x minus 12 equals, on the right side, I have to do 2 times x plus 2 times 14, which gives me 2x plus 28. And now I'll simplify. On the left, I see a pair of like terms. 9x plus 3x is 12x. And now I'll rearrange this by getting my variable terms both on the left. So I'll leave the 12x. And then I'll bring this 2x to the other side by changing its sign to negative 2x. And on the right, I'll leave my constant of 28 and bring over this other constant of negative 12 by adding 12, giving me 10x equals 40. 10 times 4 is 40, so I know the answer is 4, but to communicate that algebraically, the opposite of multiplying by 10 is dividing by 10, so I'll isolate the x by dividing both sides by 10. On the left, they cancel, giving me x equals 40 over 10, which means x equals 4 is the final answer to this equation that, once again, can be checked in the original equation. And now our last example, part g, I have a fraction equal to a fraction. I can use the shortcut of cross multiplication. On one side of the equation, I'll do the product of 6 and x minus 5. And on the other side of the equation, I'll do the product of 3 and x plus 10. And now we have a couple options here. We can do what we've been doing and just expand both sides. Or I notice that dividing both sides by 3 might actually make this equation simpler. So why don't we try that? Let's divide both sides of this equation by 3. Because on the right side of the equation, those 3's cancel. And on the left, I have a 6 divided by 3, which is 2. So on the left, I have 2 times x minus 5. And on the right, I just have an x plus 10. On the left, I'll expand by distributing the 2 to both terms, giving me 2x minus 10. On the right, I have x plus 10. And now I should rearrange this to get the variable terms. On the same side of the equation, I'll bring them both to the left. So on the left, it'll be 2x minus x. And on the right, I'll get my constants. So I'll leave that 10. And then I'll bring this negative 10 over by adding 10, giving me x equals 20. So that's the final answer to that equation, which can be checked in the original equation. So hopefully after following along with that whole lesson, you feel more confident solving equations involving fractions. Make sure you go to jensenmath.ca to get a copy of the practice questions so that you can practice and get better at solving equations with fractions. Jensen Math.